Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, pretty good mac and cheese. Uh, this is going to be used for the stuffing of the meatloaf that I'm going to sous vide in a little bit. So anyway, you can just make this as a standalone if you want, but here we go. Uh, this is not healthy, be forewarned, but it is freaking delicious. So anyway, first things first, preheat your oven to 400 degrees, which is that beep you just heard right there. Then uh, line a cookie sheet with foil. Okay. Then what we're going to do is going to take about half of this bit thing of bacon, line it up on here, and then we're going to throw it in the oven for uh, 22 minutes, 22, 23 minutes, or until the bacon is. Nice and crispy. So here we go. I'm gonna line these up, put it in the oven, and while that's cooking, I'll show you what else we need to do. All right, there you can see my glorious uncooked bacon spread. I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Um, like I said, for 22 minutes. Uh, I prefer the applewood smoked bacon for this recipe, but I'm pretty sure any bacon will be fine. So don't worry about the type. Anyway, uh, after while we're doing that, uh, what we can do now is bring a large pot of water to a boil, you know, to make the macaroni noodles. Uh, you're going to need one pound of whatever kind of elbow macaroni, and um, that will make your noodles. So I'm sure you all can probably figure out how to do that. So I'm not going to waste my time showing that. Um, all right, while you're waiting for your water to boil, which by the way, pro tip when making pasta. Throw salt in the water. I don't know why, but it makes your pasta come out less starchy and it's just better. So if you don't do that, do that. So bring a big pot of salted water to a boil. While I'm doing that, you take a 13, 13 inch by nine inch pan and we're going to grease it. So the super difficult method for doing that is to take a pat of butter and go over all the spots that do not have butter on them. Yes. So, we got that all finished. Got our nice buttery, greasy pan so the macaroni won't stick to it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and cook the noodles here. Uh, while we're waiting for that to cook, I'll show you what else we need to prepare for the sauce. So, stay tuned. Also, one other quick pro tip, if you want your water to boil faster, put a lid on it, which I did not, but I'm doing now. So, just wanted to share that with you. Okay, so while your noodles are cooking and your bacon's cooking, uh, you can gather all the supplies that you're going to need for the rest of the uh, mac and cheese making. So, what you're going to need is a stick of butter, one stick, okay, one third of a cup of flour, three cups of milk, two cups of mozzarella cheese, Two cups of white cheddar. Get some good stuff. Uh, shred it yourself. It, it tastes amazing. I'm using an English, I don't know, some kind of English white vintage cheddar cheese and uh, it smells delicious. It's going to make great, great mac and cheese here. Uh, we're also going to need a tablespoon of garlic and half a cup of blue cheese. So, that being said, uh, when you're all done cooking your bacon and your noodles, uh, obviously drain your noodles, let them sit for a little bit, and let your bacon cool. Uh, once your bacon's cool, chop it up, and uh, then I'm going to start showing you how to make the, uh, the roux. So, stay tuned. Alright, so here's what your bacon should look like when it's all done. Here's what your noodles should look like when they're all done. Just let them sit there, um, cool off for a little bit. Uh, the bacon we're going to uh, remove, put on a... a paper towel plate for a moment before we chop it up. As for the sauce, I'll get to that in one second. Alright, so here we go with the sauce. First thing we do is get a pretty good sized saucepan, put it on medium heat. Right, after we do that, we're going to add our one half cup of butter, which comes out to be one stick. And melt that so it turns nice and golden brown. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to add that tablespoon of garlic. 
So we're also going to use a whisk to create this. So make sure you have one of those handy. Uh, you don't want to use a spoon or anything because it just doesn't mix it the same. So that being said, I'm going to add the garlic to this and fast forward to the next step. All right, so we're pretty much at the point. So here we go. We're going to add the flour. Just that in. Whisk it until golden brown, which should take about a minute. Okay, so just gonna whisk it all through, make sure there's no clumps, and once this is done, uh, I believe we're gonna add the cheese next. So get those two cups of mozzarella and two cups of white cheddar ready to go because we're going to add that in here next. That cook for just a minute. I'm sorry, I do apologize. The three cups of milk is what's going to go in next. So once this starts to get a little, uh, well, pretty much how it looks right now, it's kind of foamy and golden brown, uh, we're going to go ahead and add our milk. So we're going to whisk that together as well. might seem like a lot, it might not seem like it's going to all fit in your saucepan, but trust me it does. Barely. But <clears throat> There we go. Okay. Now we're going to let this boil-ish, I mean not get to complete boil, but you'll see what I mean. Alright, stay tuned. Okay, so also at this point while you're waiting it for the roux to boil, uh, I like to add just a little bit of salt and pepper to it, you know, not a lot, maybe half a teaspoon. Um, you know, the pepper, especially if you use the big flake pepper, uh, gives it a nice look on the, uh, on the macaroni itself. So, just wanted to share that with you uh, while we're waiting for that to boil. Uh, keep stirring it once in a while, um, just to make sure like the bottom isn't burning or something. I, I don't, it kind of sticks to the bottom, but not really. So, anyway. Stay tuned while this boils, and then um, once we get to the boiling point, we're going to add our, our four cups of cheese, so stay tuned. Okay, so while you're waiting for your roux to boil, keep stirring it because it will thicken up quite a bit. Um, in addition to the two cups of mozzarella and the two cups of white cheddar, um, at this time it's probably a good idea to sort out another one cup of cheddar and one cup of mozzarella uh, for a topping to this. So um, in addition to that, we're also going to need some panko for the topping. So make sure you grab a cup of panko breadcrumbs at this time as well. So we're still waiting for a boil. It's taking a little while, but you know, good things come to those who wait, I guess. Anyway, I'll show you the next step in a sec. All right, as you can see, we are starting to boil. The sauce has thickened up a lot. It's actually kind of hard to stir quickly. It's kind of like, uh, well, kind of like a cheese sauce. So anyway, once that happens, what we're going to do next is take our giant two cups of, well, four cups of cheese and uh, dump it in. Basically, we're going to uh, we're going to whisk this around until it's all melted. So, this is the best part. Anyway, just gonna jab it down, stir it up. It'll get really thick, so make sure you have a pretty strong whisk here. Don't use those garbagey little egg beaters because uh, they'll probably bend. Anyway, this is getting nice and thick. And, um, you know, we're basically going to do this for about two minutes until all of the cheese melts. At that point, we're going to add this ooey gooey yummy cheese sauce to our macaroni noodles, which are sitting right over here and cooling nicely. So, anyway, when we get to that step, I will show you. 
but until then I'm gonna melt this cheese. Alright, I think we're about ready. I mean, you look at that. That's the yummy cheese sauce. So, anyway. I'm going to turn off the heat. Let's sit for just a second because if you let it sit much longer, it is going to really, really make your life miserable. So, we're also going to take our bacon plate of chopped bacon. Make sure you chop it up. Don't put bacon strips in your macaroni. Um, our quarter cup of blue cheese. And what we're going to do here, if I can figure out how to do this, I'm going to set up. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, I'm going to add this cheesy goodness to our noodles. Sure you get almost all of it because the cheesier macaroni is, just the better it is. Okay, keep that there, throw this in the sink. Then uh, add the bacon. And the blue cheese. Stir this up all evenly, and um, that's pretty much it. I'll show you the next step. Make sure also, uh, even after your bacon's done cooking, make sure you keep your oven on 400 because that's the temperature we're going to cook the macaroni at. So, while I'm busy doing this, I'll save you some time and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Stir it up real good. Make sure it's coated evenly throughout. And Alright, so this is why we have our greased baking pan. So this gooey sticky stuff doesn't stick while we're cooking it. But anyway, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous bacony, cheesy oh man, this stuff's awesome. But so uh, yeah, get all this stuff out, put it in your pan, smooth it out. And then once it's smooth, we're going to take those extra one cup of mozzarella and one cup of cheddar and top this thing off, okay? So, once we're all flat, we've got a couple left in here. There we go. Alright, so we'll take our mixture of cheese. Well, now it's mixed, but anyway, just top that off. You might think mozzarella and cheddar taste gross, but no, it is. Oh man, it's good. Really good combo. There we go. Okay, so got enough cheese on there. One last step here. Take our panko and cover the rest. This is about a little over one cup. Really like panko, so you know, like to add a little extra. All right. This is an optional step here I'm going to show you. Uh, but what you can do is take uh, two, two, two pats, two tablespoons of butter, uh, melt it in the microwave and drizzle it over the top. So hang on one sec while I grab that. All right, so here's our butter. I just put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Anyway, drizzle it over the top for a little extra crispiness factor. It will really go well with all the panko 
and everything else we got going on here. So yeah, just drizzle it all over, whatever. And then uh, we're gonna pop this back in the oven for 30 minutes or until this crust here is nice and golden brown. So that's pretty much it for the filling. So, you know, uh, any questions, uh, just leave a comment. I will um, show you the end product here, what it looks like when it's all done. But uh, besides that, we're all finished. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. And if you're making it at home, have any questions? Yeah, just leave a comment. So thanks for watching. And uh, off we go. All right, 30 minutes is up. And uh, this is what your topping should look like. Nice and golden brown and bubbly and delicious. Let it cool for at least 10, 15 minutes before you start eating it because it's very, very hot. So um, if you're going to be putting this in your meatloaf, stay tuned or, or go back to the video where I'm talking about that. Uh, if you're not, eat up and enjoy in 15 minutes or so. So anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you like what you see here, uh, subscribe or like it. And, uh, you know, I'll keep making stuff. So thanks again. And there's the finished product. Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, hope you enjoy.